What if now we have a reciprocal functions? Eventually, we can do this one with the reciprocal rules, but it's not going to be covered in SPM. So this is why we're going to change this one to become index form. So how do we turn it to become index? If you still remember, they tell us that 1 over x to the power of n can be written down as x power of negative n. Just like if you have 1 over x squared, I can written down as x power of negative 2. So if there's no power here, it serves as 1, right? So I bring it up, it becomes power of negative 1. So once we have this form, we can just carry out the power rules, which is dy over dx, negative 1 go in front, this is why we have negative 1, x, but don't forget, its self is going to be minus 1 as well. So after that, we can say that the dy over dx of this reciprocal function is going to be negative 1, x to the power of negative 2. But since this is a power of negative 2, it looks a little bit ugly, so I'm going to bring it down back. So it become negative 1 over x squared. So why it's not like this is because, just remember this, when you have a negative power, it means that we're going to bring it down back to become something like this. So let's say if you have x power of negative 5, it becomes like 1 over x to the power of 5. So this would be my answers. So just a recap, power of negative 1, bring in front, so it's negative 1, but don't forget, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. But this one looks a bit ugly, so I bring it back down. So this is our derivative functions. So let's, let's try to see that can we find any patterns to do it easier? So as we know, the derivative of 1 over x is just negative 1 over x squared. How about 1 over x squared? I already do for you. The answer is negative 2 over x cubed. How about y equal to 1 over x cubed? And this will be our result. So I'm going to see what is the pattern here first. If I look at here, I observe that all of the derivative of these reciprocal functions is going to be, is going to be a negative. So this is my first observation, everything must be negative. The second thing that I realize is, whatever the power of our original functions is going to be our numerator of the derivative functions. So this is one. So I can say that the power becomes the numerator. What else that we can realize from here? The third thing that I realize is, all the power increases by 1. Can you see that? 1 become 2, 2 become 3, and 3 become 4. So we know that the power is going to be increased by increased by 1. So those are the three patterns that I observe. So let's say now I try to find y is equal to 1 over x to the power of 4. The derivative of this one, if I follow my pattern, I suppose to have the answer like, First thing must be a negative, and it must be a fraction, and the power will become the numerator. So 4 will become the numerators, and it's self increased by 1. So without doing much of the things, I can find the derivative of 1 over x to the power of 4. So let us see this one. Sometimes we don't prefer to use the way which is in a fraction. We prefer to see something like a horizontal thing. So they tell us that Eventually, it's almost same like x to the power of n become n go down, and x n minus 1, right? But whenever you see reciprocal, the easy way to get this one is you just make everything becomes negative. So it means that negative n, x, negative n, minus 1. So everything become negative is almost like a power rule, but this one is everything is negative. You can see that everything is negative. So, and this is what we call as the reciprocal rules. So, I'm sure this one, if you don't really understand, doesn't matter because it's not covered in SPM, but it's good to know. But if you don't know how to do, just stick with your power rule. So, what if now the numerator is no longer 1? What we're going to do is, we're going to write down as this form, y is equivalent to 2 times 1 over x. Just in another form, means that we take out the constant out first, then only we proceed with the differentiations. So basically, it means that y dy over dx, since constant will be just stay there, so just 2 times the derivative of 1 over x. But what's the derivative of 1 over x? As you know, we can use a faster way. The derivative of 1 over x 
is eventually becomes, remember the first pattern is negative, then the power is going to be the numerators and itself increases by one. So this is why we have negative one over x squared. So we have two times negative one over x to the power of two. So if we times together two times negative one, we have negative two over x squared. So this is what we observe here. So next, how about we have three over x squared? So it basically is the same thing. Y is equals to take out the three first, bracket one over x to the power of two. If we know already, we just need to differentiate this one times with three. So if we can do it very fast, we can see that the dy over dx for this one, so the power become the numerator, right? But don't forget the negative. So negative two over and itself increased by one. So now we have negative six over x cubed. Let's do one more again. So the usual, tell the five first, become y is equivalent to five bracket one over x cubed. And we know that we just do the differentiation of this one is five times the derivative of this one. If you do it very fast, remember negative bracket, the power become numerator and itself increased by one. So if you do this one, negative three over x power of four, five times negative three is negative 15 and over x to the power of four. So this is how you deal with something that is not one in the numerators. So let's do it again one more time by using power rules. So we can just do like this. Y is equal to like usual, take the two out times one over x. But we can return down the two, one over x to become index form, which is x to the power of negative one. Then only we carry out the power rules. So the negative one, bring to the front, so negative one, bring to the front, two times negative one is negative two, x, and is served minus by one. So this is why we can say that the differentiation of this one is going to be negative two x to the power of negative two. But the power of negative two looks a little bit ugly, so we're going to bring it back down, it becomes negative two over x to the power of two, which is the same answer as the one that just now we just discussed. So we try again with one more, and we can do it a little bit faster. We can just say that this one is become three x to the power of negative two, because when we bring this one up, become x to the power of negative two, when they times together, they can become stick together. Then we do the differentiation dy over dx. So as usual, so we can carry out the power rules, negative two go to the front, negative six, and it's self minus one. So this is why we get negative six x to the power of negative three, but if you want to make it a little bit prettier, it can become negative six over x cubed. So same thing, when we have y equal to five over x cubed, we can write it as y is equivalent to five x to the power of three. So when we carry out the differentiations, we use the power rule, which the negative three, we bring to the front times with the five, it become negative 15 x power of negative four. If you want to prettify it, you can just say that it's a negative 15 over, bring it down back, x to the power of four. So let's say now we have y is equivalent to the square of x. And if we see this kind of radical form, we're going to convert this radical form to become index form so that we can use power rules. So as we know, root of x is just equivalent to x to the power of one over two. But what if now we have something that is in higher in power? So let's say we have cube root of x to the power of four. That tells us that if in index form, whatever on top here is the power, so we have power of four, and whatever in the fraction, if it's in the denominator, is going to be the root. So we have x to the power of four over three. So again, if we have the root that is power of five and rise to the power of seven, we can return it as x to the power of seven over five. So let's go back to this one. So we go to change this one to become the index form, which is y is equivalent to x to the power of one over two. So once we have this one, we can bring the power down and it's self going to be reduced by one. So dy over dx is equivalent to one over two x, one over two minus one. So if you count by yourself or using calculators, one over two minus one is basically just 
negative 1 over 2. Then after that, we're going to bring down the negative 1 over 2 so that it looks better. So dy over dx is equivalent to 1 over 2x to the power of 1 over 2. But why is x to the power of 1 over 2? Hey, it's just square root of x. So I can beautify it even further, become 1 over 2 square root of x. And this one is very good that if you can memorize it because we use it very often. So whenever you say root x, you can return it as 1 over 2 square root of x. So this is going to be the answer. Again, just a recap. When you see radical form, we're going to convert to become the index form so that you can use the power rule to bring it to the front and it's self reduced by 1. And you want to beautify it, we bring it down again to become the denominator, which is the 2 square root of x. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more video like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.